Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Sarah. I am um, Lady Lugana on FlossTube and thanks for joining me today. If you are new to this channel, this is a channel dedicated to cross stitch and discussing projects and works in progress and projects I have going as well as um, just getting to spend time in the community of stitchers that um, is on FlossTube essentially. Uh, I enjoy it and I'm glad you are here with me today. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you again today. Um, it has been about, oh, excuse me, one month since I last filmed and I keep getting the glare. I'm sorry. I'm going to adjust. Uh, there we go. Uh, one month since I last filmed. Um, I'm going to move you again. Sorry, guys. Okay. And it has been a busy, busy, busy month. I have a lot to share today. Um, I have a fully finished object, um, Queen City Stitch Retreat uh, recap, which I'm sure many of you have seen already um, and got to share with other uh, stitchers who have already posted about it. Um, I have works in progress and oh my goodness, this is going to be a haul heavy episode. <laughs> Um, I've done some shopping and so in anticipation of the new year and in anticipation of Halloween, Halloween's my favorite time of year. So I participate in a couple of, um, cross stitch boxes that are so much fun. And so I'll talk about those today too. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, if you are new to this channel, I am a nurse practitioner. I live in New Hampshire and we woke up to a very frosty morning today. Um, no snow on the ground. Um, it was spitting snow two days ago the other day, um, but I'm hopeful that the sun will come out for all the trick-or-treaters today. Uh, today is October 31st, so happy Halloween. <laughs> Best time of the year. Um, so let me get started because it is going to be a busy episode. But first, I will show you my finished, fully finished object. I have if you have followed me on this channel, you have seen this project before. Um, this is Snow Maiden by Mirabilia, Nora Corbett under the design uh, name Mirabilia. This is the piece that I started in December of 2022, the last week of December. It was essentially my new year, new start. And I intended to finish this for the Queen City Stitch Retreat. I completed the stitching in August and I got the frame done. It took about four weeks to frame. Um, and so it got uh, returned to me. It was returned to me uh, about a week before our stitch retreat in August, or October. And so here she is. Ah, oh. isn't she so good? Oh my goodness. She's so pretty. Let me, she's big. So this is Snow Maiden. She is stitched on a, that's glary. Sorry guys. She is stitched on a 32 count Dove Lugana, um, but by Zap Weigart. Um, oh, she's so pretty. She's called, um, stitched with all the call for colors. Um, she has water lily silk in her. She has Krynek. Um, she has beads. She is matted. This is silk and you can kind of see the sheen on it. The matting is silk, purple silk fabric. And my husband picked out the frame and the mat, and I think he did a very good job with it. <laughs> and so I am so proud of her. She is my first fully finished Mirabilia. Um, I have one finished Nora Corbett and one finished Mirabilia now. And so she is just so beautiful. I, I mean, look at her. Let's see if I can get close enough. It's gonna be hard though, cause she's heavy. You can see it's, not too bad with a glare. It is museum glass, but my one of my favorite parts are those beads that are going up the center of her skirt. Oh, she's just so pretty. And so, Snow Maiden by Mirabilia. Ooh, so excited. So I got to put her on the brag table. Excuse me, I'm gonna actually go hang her back up on the wall so I don't knock her down, break her, you know. That would be just perfect, wouldn't it? So I apologize, I'm leaving the frame. So let me see if I can get her back up here. Oh, and hanging so she can sit behind us as we're chatting. Um, as my dogs come barreling in, it's probably good not to have her sitting on the floor. <laughs> um, 
So um, I was able to place her on the brag table. And many of you saw pictures of the brag table. It was absolutely stunning. If I am able to, I'll try to get pictures in at the end of this video so you can see some of the beautiful works. I did not get a full um, shot of all the pieces. There was just so many and we kept bringing in more tables to set up more pieces and then they were becoming like, um, if it was a single individual's work, they, they were stacked. And so there was just, it was, amazing to see all those beautiful works um so whew, I, yeah and which brings me into i guess i'll talk about some of my whips and some the retreat a little bit at the same time so the retreat was october oh my goodness my dogs are wrestling and it's completely shaking the floor <laughs> Um, the retreat was in October um, this month and it was the first weekend october 6 38 playing <laughs> um and so uh it was in uh charlotte north carolina sorry i'm using a lot of filler words today i'm distracted by my dogs um and it was marvelous it was just wonderful to be around other women who enjoy stitching it was marvelous to be around people who understand and have a passion for stitching um one of the more memorable kind of just um quintessential moments of recognizing that you are among like-minded people among stitchers was someone had just started their first chatelaine and so they rang the cowbell and they're like she started her first chatelaine and the entire room cheered because the entire room understood what that meant and i was like if i were in any other company and sitting among any other people and they were like she started her first chatelaine it would just be like what <laughs> and so i i enjoyed that a lot i got to go with my sister um, she um, was able to join us for that trip, and so we had some fun times together. Uh, I started, so because I finished her, I needed a new Mirabilia. So I started a new big Mirabilia, and um, they had one project for us there, as well as um, a new kind of small Nora Corbett Mirabilia, technically. Um, so let me pull those out, and this will show some of my haul, because I did buy bags there. So, let's see. <laughs> so the first one I will show you, all of these only got one day this month. So they weren't a lot of focus. And at cross stitch retreats, you don't tend to do as much stitching as one would expect because you're chatting and conversing and socializing and looking at everybody else's cross stitch and going to the brag table on repeat and shopping. So the first Mirabilia I started was Adia or Adia, I don't know how to say it, the Garden Fairy. And this is what she looks like. And she, as many of you may know from my very first episode, is my absolute favorite, I think. It's hard to say, there's just so many beautiful ones, but I think she is among the, um, try to get a rid, rid of the glare, among the, um, list among my favorites, listed among my favorites. So, having a spaz there. I don't know. Can't speak. I can't speak today. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was inspired in my fabric choice by Fiber Arts Amy. She shows this piece uh, in her one of her earlier videos finished, and it is on a purple fabric. So I'm stitching her two over two on 32 count Orchid Lugana. And I gotta see which way's up. This is how much I got done. <laughs> so not too terrible of a start, um, all things considered, because we were at a retreat. I did a center start this time, and I think the fabric is absolutely beautiful. She's gonna be great. She's gonna pop all those golds and yellows, and she has a bit of pink and green, and then the gems, they're just gonna be marvelous. And then this little guy, um, came from the retreat also. They were passing out little autumnal, one of our, the guests was passing out, one of the attendees was passing out little autumnal um, needle minders. And so this was a gift and it was super cute. And so this is Aja the Garden Fairy. Just started. Ooh, and I just clicked my uh, needle minders together. Let me fix that. Oops. So 
See if I can get close up so you can see a little bit more of my stitching. There we go. I think I do this every time where I can't tell if the light is like good, bad, not good, okay. So that's that. Um, and I adjust it every single time too, don't I? Maybe we'll go there and see what happens. That's a bit brighter, isn't it? I haven't seen that. Can you see? Yeah, you can see a little bit better. Okay, we'll try that. And then you guys can tell me if you're screaming at me, no, Sarah, that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and look at some of the chronic in her. Look at this green, sorry, little bags. Oh, how shiny and sparkly that is. Mm. And this purple, it's gonna look so good. It's gonna look so good. So she is my new Big Mirror Bilia focus piece. This bag of beads. <laughs> oh. So, and I was lazy. I haven't gotten all her floss put away or anything like that, but she's gonna be pretty. And she lives in my little boat 88 Sleeping Beauty bag. So that is my first new start. The second new start, um, let me see if I can, I don't know actually if I can find a picture. Um, it is the Queen City Stitch Retreat start that Nora Corbett designed, um, the piece I should say. Let me see if I can find a good picture of the piece. Here she is. I don't know if you can see this. Um, there we go. So she is a queen. It's not a very good picture. Kind of washed out. Mm. She's a queen. She says 20, 2023 Queen City Mirabilia. She's got all these beautiful colors in her. There we go. Um, she's holding a piece of stitch work, uh, needlework in her hand. And she's got a needle in the other hand. And so this was the piece that Nora Corbett designed for our retreat. One of our, in our goodie bag, which we all had beautiful goodie bags at our desk, or our desk, my goodness, at our table. Um, beautiful canvas bags. In it, it was... full of a notions pouch. And this notions pouch had um, some of the goodies for the actual um, piece itself. Had some other things like cutesy little um, wax molds and scissors. And so there were other things. And there was um, cross stitch cards, that Mirabilia cross stitch cards. And so that was one of the fun things that we got. And I put her the retreat had two um, exclusive project bag designs. They were um, Sheba Designs, and she did two colorways. This was the first colorway. Doesn't that just scream Mirabilia? Look how like elegant and fancy lady this is. And then this was the second colorway. So I have one of each, and this is it's just beautiful. And this one has like a thread bed in it. I'm doing haul and Mirabilia retreat a little bit at the same time. This beautiful thread bed. It's big. And they say um, Queen City Stitch Retreat 2023. And so my new project is in here. And every single person, the cute little notions bag. Look how cute that is. It's so pretty. <laughs> oh. um, it has all sorts of beautiful floss. Look at this. This is water lilies. Look at these beautiful colors. My goodness, these reds and these purples. And this, this is just stunning. Look at that. It goes from yellow to purple to pink. It's just beautiful. Um, it's got some Krynik in it. Came with the little beads. Look at 
gold and the crown. My goodness. So part of the, what made, well, this is my first retreat, so I don't know if this is what made it unique, but the retreat itself was absolutely amazing. Uh, Maggie and Amy, they blew us away with the amount of work and the amount of consideration and the amount of time that they dedicated to putting this together. Um, I think all the funds went back in, the funds for registration, et cetera, all went back into the retreat. And so everything that we enjoyed um, was all in, all due to their hard work and their effort and their generosity with their time. Um, many, many, many people contributed in terms of um, providing gifts, providing giveaways, and every single individual, I could you not, I, I can't remember, 145 attendees approximately, um, received a giveaway. Every single one um, received something. And so I say that because my giveaway was a piece of fabric and it is by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. And this is the first time I've ever used any Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. It, I won this, it's a 36 count linen. I um, mean, it's called Glowing Dreams. This was my giveaway piece. And I was so excited because it's perfect and wrinkly for the um, Queen City stitch piece. Like, look at this. It's got, oh my gosh, that's just so pretty. It's got the purples, it's got the pinks, it's got the mixture of the golds, yellows in it. It literally, in my opinion, matches this floss. Like, it's perfect. And so, I don't have a very big start and it's upside down. Um, don't have a very big start and it's sideways. <laughs> I'll get there, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> um, this is like the top of her bodice and her skirt's gonna come down on either side. Uh, she's just beautiful. There's gonna be white, it's gonna pop. It's just, oh, it's gonna be good. Um, and so this is a 36 count though. I've never stitched any Nora Corbett or anything on a 36 count. She's gonna be petite and small. Uh, so I may need to replace the beads with smaller beads. We'll see. Um, and then check this out. A little the needle minder, Queen City. Everything, it's just so well put together. And so, ha, ah, so wrinkly, but I'm excited to stitch this. This will be in my whip pile. And I kind of have some plans, ideas moving forward, but I'll probably talk about that as we get closer to the new year. So she will be amongst those plans. Um, and she lives in my retreat bag. Let me stick her away. I won't zip it this time. So that was day two of the retreat um, that I stitched on her. Or day three. Day two or three. Day three, maybe. Um, and then day one of the retreat. So I think day one of the retreat was this one. Adia the Garden Fairy was day two. And day three was um, the new start. And so I also brought a small piece to stitch in honor of being the October month and I was like well I can't stitch something that's not Mirabilia at a Mirabilia retreat <laughs> so I did bring the Halloween fairy and got just a little bit of a stir on her she is so darling if you want to see someone who put a lot of effort and work into her this October you should check out Lala D stitches um, she got a lot done on her and I was very grateful to see her stitching because we had the same concern and I'll point it out here don't mind my not surged fabric and I have hanging threads and everything. It's a hot mess. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I was concerned because this is a quite a bit of a stark contrast comparatively um, in comparison to the other colors, but even in comparison to what it appears to be in that uh, cover photo. I don't know if it's a dye lot change or if it's just photography itself, um, but seeing hers, it reassures me that it trust the process. She knows what she's doing when she's designing these things. <laughs> As you well, very well may have um, been able to see. If you are interested, the question and answer session, kind of interview session with Nora Corbett, who was present at the retreat um, and made the retreat extra special. Um, the interview that she gave on day two, I believe it was, is available on 
Catherine the Needleberry Stitcher's um, floss tube. She recorded the whole thing, and so you can watch that. And it's just touching and amazing and so very heartfelt. Uh, my favorite part being that she, when she designs, she hand symbols everything so that the process remains pure because it will go from her hands, no computer generation um, in terms of the creation to our hands for um, the final product, which I was just like, oh, goosebumps. <laughs> anyway, so this is my baby start. <laughs> Not very much. Not too bad considering this is a day at a retreat and I did not do a whole lot of stitching. I did a whole lot of talking. <laughs> My sister, bless her heart, she used to be the social butterfly and then she has become more introverted over time and then we have flip-flopped. I used to be very, very introverted and now I'm much more outgoing. Um, and so she was just like, you're talking to everybody. Everybody's talking to you. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> so it was fun. <laughs> But that is my baby start on the Halloween fairy. And so in terms of plans, I'll just mention this, not like go into great detail. Oh, and this is in another bag that I, this was, so um, Sheba Designs. She had made the specialty bags, but she also brought other bags for sale. And oh, I just love this fabric. Look at this. Oh, she's, this is just so good. <laughs> and so this is my, um, bag for the Halloween fairy also new so kind of haul like I said it's gonna be a mismatch in all these beautiful colors a mismatch of information kind of all spewed in look at this all these beautiful colors I love the vintage kind of appeal of these colors they're not classic Halloween but they are all very autumnal Halloween-esque and so so good so good so I will put her away. So those that's the Mirabilia retreat. And I'll finish up with some of the other cutesy little things that we got and people's generosity um, as part of for now. And then I'll go into Hall Hall later. W one individual, and I can't remember her name. I'm terrible. Um, she made needle books for everybody. And she cross-stitched this. So she was literally giving out these beautiful needle books um, and then she had pinned, I've taken the pin out because I've already stabbed myself. She had pinned a crown in the top. Isn't this just darling? Like, so thoughtful, so wonderful. I just, mouth open, flummoxed. Every, every moment was amazing. Um, part of it was a notions giveaway. And so we were able to, um, I was able to participate in the notions giveaway and um, it was a lot of fun. Stitch and Shorty, if you have not followed her on Instagram, uh, she is got a lot of beautiful pieces and she's wonderful and generous and lovely. Um, and thank you again so much for such a wonderful notions gift. Um, she put together a little bag. Um, it was full of Canadian candy, like Smarties. I have always wanted to try Canadian Smarties and I have not done it until now. And they were so delicious because they're like not quite M&Ms, but they are like hard candy on the outside, chocolate on the inside. So compared to our Smarties, which are addictive in and of themselves, I like to put them between my fingers because they're like, it's like they fit perfectly. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being weird. Um, but <laughs> completely different candies. And so it was enjoyable to um, snack on those because it was so good. So she put together this beautiful package. It had Smarties in it. Um, it had a bag of Werther's caramels, which I got to share with the table. They didn't last very long um, between the table and my bringing them home and a 15 hour car ride. They didn't last long at all. But she also gave me these beautiful silks. Look at these. These are silks for you. Look at those. Five different silk colors. And they're all variegated and all beautiful and oh, just so pretty. And then she, a um, little bling, look how pretty that is. So wonderful. And then she um, did all sorts of cutesy little notions. Like look at these needle minders. They, I love needle minders, they're so sweet. And this pair of scissors, I've been using them. I couldn't wait. These are nice scissors, <laughs> like super nice scissors. 
a little needle um, case. Oh, it was such a cute little bag and I was like so excited to receive it. Um, so thank you again. Silks for you. I'm excited to use these. I've never used their silk and it's just stunning. Oh my gosh, like I look at this and it makes me want to stitch like a monochromatic piece. I don't know if you can see. There it is, the purple. Oh, so good, so good. Anyway, let me put this away. <laughs> there were table gifts, which were super lovely. Um, let me pull out. I also got a matching grime guard because you can never have too many grime guards. And then last but not least, beautiful table gifts. Um, Jan, she made us a Queen City um, stitch retreat bag. She put Charlotte on it. The designs, Mirabilia's design named Charlotte. Um, and it was full of goodies. Everybody was doing floss drops. Look at these adorable little floss drops. All this bling. There's bling everywhere. All sorts of little needle minders. Look at that. A twall. Oh, stickers. Stickers are definitely going in my um, book of days. Lots of people did stickers. Look how cute those are. Oh, I'm throwing things on the ground. And so, um, all sorts of cute little stuff. Mm. So it was a great time, to say the least. And I don't want to spend all the time talking about it, um, but it was definitely one of the highlights of this year, of this month. Um, a marvelous, marvelous time. So let me tuck this away. And then the last thing that I got in anticipation of the retreat, which came in really handy actually. If you've never se seen one of these, it's like a stitch placemat, stitch mat. Um, has a little ort doodad that sticks on here. This came in very handy. Um, stitch in Peace is the designer. She makes project bags as well, and I have a couple of those, but I very much enjoyed this stitch mat while I was there. And so highly recommend if you're going to be attending retreats or anything like that, this is very convenient. I mean, even in my lap, I like putting it in my lap now. So, so that's kind of partial haul, mirabilia retreat, um, projects I started there. Now let's see, let me get into whips that I worked on since the retreat and um, what I've been doing for the autumn, my Halloween stitching. There's one I wanted to show you first. I forgot to show this last time. Um, so I put a little bit of time into it. It was a new start last time, so there's no before picture. Um, and I've shown this to you before I started. <laughs> the design name is called Fierce Beauty. Let me pull her up. No, I take it back, A Fierce Beauty. Um, by MJP as the artist, and it's charted by Pain Free Crafts. And this was my fourth wing inspiration, and I'm so excited because the second book comes out next month, and so this is what she looks like. Isn't she just so pretty? She, he, I don't know majestic nonetheless all those colors mm. so this is a full coverage design I stitch all my full coverage pieces on 28 count one over one not very big because it's but look how cute that is oh it's got so many colors through here like all those colors look how beautiful they are can you see there we go. Such good colors. So this is the top here, right in there. And so that's coming down here. So she is beautiful. And I really enjoyed, it's like a perfect combination of um, confetti stitches and block stitching. And she lives in a um, Jasmine, Jasmine custom bags. Dragon bag, of course, because you can't have a dragon without a dragon bag. So she was from 
the end of September, which I forgot to show last time. Ooh. All right. Let's see. What should I do next? So this is another piece. Um, also another bag from the Cross Stitch Retreat vinyl front. This was a piece that came in last year's um, Autumn Lane Street Halloween box, which was glorious. And I got their box this year as well. I love it. If you ever are interested in getting a um, seasonal box, because I know they can be expensive and you don't oftentimes know what you get. And I highly, highly, highly recommend Autumn Lane Stitchery's Halloween box. Um, I have not tried their, I was unable to get their Christmas box last year, so I can't speak to that. But two years now I've gotten their Halloween box and it's just so much fun. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, the best thing to open ever. So I'll show you the next one or this year's um, pieces of it. But this was the main piece in their last year, uh, last year's box. They've released it this year to the public. It's called Tonight We Ride. And they, in the box, gave us the floss, um, the called for fabric, which is Pumpkin Patch by Bestitch Me. And then check out these cute little needle minders. <laughs> these are not needle minders, floss drops. <laughs> Look at them. They say, all right, their little tombstones R.I.P. This is the first time I've ever put anything on floss drops, and I think I actually kind of like it a lot. Um, so I might start putting things on floss drops in the future. We'll see. I don't know. I'm a floss away bag kind of person too. But look, it's very simple palette. There's only one, two, three, four, five colors. They're so cute. Um, and so this is a new start as well. And this is where I got to, if I can find the top. So I spent three days on this. So this is the top of the house started to fill in the moon and this is the bottom of a broom and look at this fabric it's being it's not quite it looks a little more dull um, in our this lighting it's a bit more vibrant but isn't that just amazing look at this oh. and because it's bestitched me meaning because it's over dyed I find that the black on this has great coverage with two strands. This is 32 count, two over two. And this needle minder, Autumn Lane's tree makes really good needle minders. Oh, they're freaking amazing. Look at that thing. It's like, if I threw it at someone, it could be a weapon. <laughs> but I love this piece. I love this fabric. I love this piece. It's just quintessential Halloween to me. Simple, yet iconic. So good. So good. So this got three days this month. And I'm trying to decide if three days is enough. Like, I feel like that's not a whole lot of stitching for three days. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just a terribly slow stitcher. So I may change my rotation and, like, try to give things five days, which would mean less projects to show, but maybe more progress. So, yeah. So that is one of the pieces I worked on, one of my new starts. So cute. Let's see, and unfortunately, I don't know if it's unfortunate, this isn't in the usual order of new starts, whips, haul. Um, I have broken, broken that. Um, let's see, next. The next two pieces are whips. Let me pull up. Let me just tell you, the next one's a beast. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh, I did not realize how much stitching is in a Hawk Run Hollow, which is dumb because everybody talks about how much stitching is in a Hawk Run Hollow. <laughs> so this is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. <laughs> this is what you uh, saw last. This is, I started this last year um, at the very, very, very end of October. So I got like less than a day on it. Not less than a day because a day is a day, a day on it. Um, and I got the first block outlined and I think part of the problem was besides the fact that it was the very end of October was that um at that time this is the first piece I ever picked up on 40 count so it's on 40 count doubloon by picture this plus 
and I didn't have good lighting magnification at that time, so I couldn't see nothing. And so I was like squinting and not having a good time stitching it. So it, it did get put away quickly. This is what it looks like. And you saw my progress, barely any. And despite putting like four days to five days in on this, I still didn't make a whole lot of progress. <laughs> But I did get the um, haunted house started. And so the moon and the ghosty and the words. So all of this is new. Which actually it looks pretty good. I was concerned. I am concerned. I don't know if you can see. It's hard to tell. Um, this is one over two linen threads on 40 count. Um, I wasn't as pleased with the black coverage on this um, with the one thread only. Cute little needle minders. Um, and so because of that, I did put it away. I'm thinking, so I'll probably continue using DMC 310 to finish this. Um, and then to do all the squares, but then I think I might switch out for anchor black in some of the, like the other motifs. I just don't want the house to have like different coverage within the house. Um, Cause I do think anchor black does cover better. And I will show you a piece where, um, I, I, this one actually, I'll show that to you. And it's in my opinion, better coverage. Um, let me, not zip that up. And this lives in a Teresa Cogut bag. I shouldn't say that. It's a Little Boat 88 bag, but it's Teresa Cogut fabric. Super cute. The next one is also a whip. And this is the first big piece that I kitted up. Um, do, 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 do. I can find the before picture with floss, or not with floss, everything's kitted with some kind of floss, uh, with, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Silk. I must have not taken a picture of this one. So there is no before, but that's okay. And this is Ghoul Tide Welcome by Picture This Plus. So I've uh, kitted this up with all MPI silk. I kitted it up last year and started it also at the end. Um, I got inspired to start all these pieces at the beginning and then by the time everything like arrived it was near the end of October so but it is um, stitched on a 36 count ale two over two and it got about three days so before I had this part of the border and like, part of this pumpkin and part of this pumpkin not the whole thing and so I brought the border down a little bit. I got the big white and pumpkin done, which is actually quite a bit of stitching, believe it or not. And I put the rest of those pumpkins in. And I just love, silk floss is so fun to work with. I mean, look at that. Oh, I love the way this, look how poppy it is. It's gonna be so good. And this fabric is divine. It's like screams Halloween to me. Look at that. It's just grungy and beautiful at the same time. I love it. My dogs are awfully quiet. I'm becoming suspicious. I don't know where they are. <laughs> and this also lives in a, oh no, this is a Lake House Stitch Company bag. And it has this old kind of vintage fabric on the inside and checks on the outside and so I think I'm going to stitch of the Halloween pieces my husband really likes a ghoul tide welcome and so I will try to stitch that on like the 13th and the 31st slash 30th of the month um, if possible that's I'm, I'm trying to incorporate it more into um, more throughout the seasons Next two are technically, one's a new start, one's a restart. And this was an impulse start. Um, and I spent one day on this. And so this is Golden Delicious by The Artsy Housewife. Um, you may see this on light fabric and or dark fabric because there's a dark fabric um, colorway as well. 
and it's so good. Look at that. It's just, it really makes me think of New England. It's like quintessential New England to me for some reason. It's in my head. I'm like, this is where I live. And so look at this border. Look at that. And it's just so good with a little crow. I love it. Those apples, there's like five colors. Not really five colors, but there's multiple colors in those apples to make them look actually deli like they look delicious. Hence the name Golden Delicious. But um, this was a impulse start. And I bought the kit from Evertotes. So that, not really a kit, I bought the floss and the pattern from them so that I could use the Roxy Floss Co. Um, ooh, look at that. Aren't those pretty? The rest of them are in floss away bags. You can see some of the colors. Look at that. Look at that bright one. Um, so I could use the, these because they're stunning and I've never really used a whole lot. I have one other pattern with them, but not a lot of progress on it and it's perfect. It was also an excuse to use Amy's new fabric. Um, so if you have not heard or seen or um, are new to Floss Tube, Fiber Arts Amy, one of the retreat um, hosts, hostesses, um, opened her own business. It's called Oak Crown Studios. She has amazing linen. Um, she talks, and I mean fabric, period, not just linen. She talks about um, her background in chemistry and all of these beautiful things. Um, she does a lot of natural dyes. Uh, I have a piece that's turmeric dyed and I'm gonna show it to you because I went kind of crazy and bought all sorts of stuff from her. <laughs> highly, re highly recommend her um, fabric. Um, I am now part of her Fabric of the Month Club. She is shipping out her first, I think it's this month. And so I am so excited. So this piece is stitched on Rainy Day, 32 Count Lugana. I didn't get very far, but it's so good and so wrinkly. So sorry. Look at that. Look at the fabric, first of all. It's just so pretty. Look at that. I just, I can't, it's like the perfect color. So pretty, so, so pretty. I'm like, I was just contemplating whether or not I shouldn't have done a start in the center because maybe it's in fact, I could get more of it, <laughs> more use out of it. But look, it's so cute. A little apple, you know, started on the roof and I got a hanging thread. Didn't even have the uh, uh, tenacity or perseverance to stitch this whole thread in. I just stopped, it's fine. My cute little needle minders. My little ghosty hanging upside down. He's holding a little pumpkin in his hand. I don't know if you can see it. He's so cute. And I don't know if I'm like muffling myself by talking back here, but highly, 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 highly recommend her fabric. Highly recommend Roxy Flosco Company's floss. It's just good. Hi I mean, I just highly recommend all of this. This is a great pattern. <laughs> um, and this lives in a little boat 88. Um, is this little boat? Yeah. I clearly have a preference for little boat 88 bags. Um, this is an autumnal bag with, oh, I suppose I don't have to do this. It's vinyl, isn't it? <laughs> you can see right through. Um, cute little leaves on the front. So that was a new start. And I will work on this. I want to work on this more in November as well. And then my last new start, which I started yesterday, um, actually, I had a great day yesterday where I got to hang out and have a stitchy date with the Huga stitcher, Samantha. We were able to chat and stitch together and um, she has stitched this piece and she mentions actually in her last philosophy video about milk chocolate, which helps milk chocolate linen, how much she loves stitching on it and it is so much fun to stitch on. I just, I love it as well. Let me find. So this is um, Emmy by Nora Corbett. So my plan is to have a Christmas Nora Corbett, like the reindeer collection, Santa Courier. I think Santa's Couriers is what it's called. Um, a pixie couture, a bewitching pixie, um, and one of the seasonal, like the holiday fairies, like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Easter, 
going until I get through all of them. So this will be my bewitching pixie that I'm working on. Um, I This is a restart. So I started this, I was gifted the beads and um, several other things by Cass Lindy on Instagram last year. And um, yeah, last year I think it was. And she's already done with hers. And was it Primrose? Primrose got mine. You would think I would learn, but I obviously don't. Um, I don't know why I am obtuse, apparently. <laughs> she chewed on the edges of the fabric. And in fact, it would have probably been okay. Um, but in the end, I thought the DMC 310 didn't cover on this fabric very well, so I switched it to Anchor Black, which is why I have uh, quantitative evidence to support use of <laughs> Anchor Black if you think the coverage is poor. And so this, I started yesterday. Um, and this is where I am. So this is her bodice. This is going to be um, this part of the cape coming out. So I made decent progress in a single stitching session. Um, granted, the said single stitching session was full of fun conversation and um, wasn't short, which was a lot of fun. We were able to chat for quite some time. So it's not like a 30 minute stitching session, which tends to be what I normally get. Um, this was lovely to work on and look at that look how dense that coverage looks like you can't even it's like black black like the darkest soul of halloween <laughs> and so this will be my um, bewitching pixie for this year um probably two years i would guess to get through um those oh and check it out it's winnie isn't she awesome she came with the bag this is my um Hocus Pocus bag. I can't remember who made this though. And it doesn't have, oh, the 805 stitcher. I think this is the only bag I have from the 805 stitcher, but it is adorable and I love it. And so look at these, I love it. So that is my last work in progress. And I'm gonna pop her back on cause she will be, if I am lucky, if I will be able to get some more stitches in on her today. Sadly, I may not be lucky because I have to go rake up a million leaves before more frost and snow. My dog, sorry, I just got distracted. My dog is like staring at a wall and it's a little unnerving. <laughs> like she's just like over there staring. I'm like, oh, we live in an old house. What do you see? <laughs> so distracted. Sorry. All right. Last but not least, haul. If you are with me still, thank you for sticking it out this long. If you are tired, I understand. The next section is all about haul. So if this is not your not your interest or you're just done with it, that's okay. <laughs> um, I think the first thing, let me do, oh. I'll save the Halloween boxes for last, but I went a little crazy and I have to just say, where are, ah, I wanted to show you some fabric that I bought from Amy. So Grace Notes Studios, Grace Notes, Grace Notes Studios, Grace Notes Fabrics, just kidding, Grace Note Fabrics, uh, Crown Oak Crown Studios was the vendor at the retreat and so they had their table this is the first time i've ever been able to purchase fabric in person and see it and touch it and manhandle it before i buy it and they got their money's worth out of me <laughs> and so i just wanted to point out this is the fabric um specific to the retreat it was called nora um, it is exclusive but it's beautiful um, that's more true to color and I think almost all my stuff is Lugana, almost. And so I was just gonna show you a couple of pieces of their fabric, cause they make, I mean, look at these colors. I got several pieces trying to decide what to put the Artsy Housewife on. This one's like a peachy, it's called Molly. This one's even peachier, it's peaches and cream. Just a slew of beautiful colors. This one I love. I'm thinking about restarting uh, Madonna in the garden. 
the Mirabilia, I think that's the name of it, um, on this. I'm not, um, she's been tucked away because I'm not particularly happy. That was the first time I had ever stitched on linen, two over two, really. And so I was still really young in my stitching and I've improved so much that I think I may restart her on something. I mean, look at that, that's so pretty. And so there's that. Um, this is a beautiful, it's called Almond Milk. You can see a theme, pastels, kind of light colors tends to be what I, this is more peachy, or ra, ra, bleh, raspberry latte. It's kind of got more purpley in it. Um, diminuendo, a nod to music, nod to the music loving people out there. And then this one is Mary. This one's more modeled. So these were beautiful. Highly recommend their fabrics too. I haven't stitched on any of them yet, but I'm like touching them and in love with them. So that's some of the haul. But then Amy, oh my goodness. Look at this stuff. Look at this beautiful stuff. This is called Fairy Moon. And I'm not doing great because I don't have a board, which I still need to buy. Here, let me block it with my body. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love this. I feel like this would be, have you seen that new pattern out? Is it Sugar Plum Village? Something like that. Um, I feel like this would be like a Christmassy, wintry, magical piece for that. This one's called Lipstick. I was gonna put my Queen City stitch on this and then I won that other fabric. Isn't this just so pretty? So I don't know what to put on this, but I, I think it's beautiful. Berry crumble, oh, just, oh, oh, it's just so good. Look at that, what, what to stitch, what to stitch on, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. And the modeling, it's just so pretty. It's a little more subtle in person, but it, the color is actually pretty um, true. Oh, so good. And then this is one of my favorites. This is called Shadows, Goldenrod Shadows. And she said that she was telling me she dyed this with actual turmeric. It's just so freaking amazing. I love this, love this piece. Yep. I kind of want to put a geisha on this from Joan Elliott. Yep. So, Oak Crown Studios, Crown Oak Studios, Oak Crown Studios. It is Oak Crown Studios. <laughs> Highly recommend. And then, and then. So Autumn Lane Stitchery, their box. It was amazing. Look at that. It even was decorated on the inside by theme. <laughs> Mike's like, are you really going to keep that box? I'm like, I'm really tempted to. I know it's a box, but I look at it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, so I have disassembled it and I'm reaching. I'm sorry. You can probably tell that though. <sighs> disassembled it. Uh, it came with all sorts of goodies. Like it came with this beauty, which I have been addicted addicted to already. It's called Gloves in a Bottle. It's for, it's non-greasy and it's for, um, I can actually, it's, have you seen Stitcher's Lotion? It's kind of like that, um, but a little more hearty, it feels like. It came with a kit called Evening Stroll. Look how adorable that is. So cute. All the floss, the perforated paper. It even has the um, frame, so you can put it in the frame when you're all done. And it came with, it looked like a 3D printed stand, which I forgot to bring out. Oh, this stand. 3D printed and or wood, I can't remember. So it came with this. It came with several patterns. 
This one's called Dance Party. Isn't that just fun? Black Cat. I think Autumn Lane Stitchery does um, Halloween very well. There are some of my favorites. This one's called Trick or Treat. Also fun. Those ghosties up top, they're like stretched out like, ooh. <laughs> but the most amazing pattern was in this bag. This box, it's not a bag, it's a box. It's called Witch's Hollow. And I like jaw dropped when I saw this. This is amazing. Look at this thing. Oh, oh, so good. I wanted to start it, but I decided I should finish tonight. We ride first. Look at this thing. It's amazing. It calls for pumpkin patch, which is that same fabric. But I also got Halloween supplies from Bestitch Me. And I think I have an alternative fabric to use, in fact. This was in the Bestitch Me box, which came with an eye of Oort, um, which is adorable. It came with all sorts of little goodies. Where is, look at this, I had, oh, I'm attached. Oh, little bag, with little skeletons on it. This is a needle minder, but it's sticky, so you can put beads on it when you're beading. And it, like a little pin, it's either, yeah, I think a pin or a, a frogger. Oh no, this is a frogger. This is a pin. They're Halloween box. I just love Halloween boxes. Autumn Lane Citri and Bestitch Me did such a great job this year. I couldn't handle it. Look at these. Aren't those beautiful? Oh my goodness. This one came in the Stitch Me box. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But for this, they sent me three pieces of um, 32 count Lugana. This one's called Blood Moon. Look at this. It is so loud and so amazing and it would go so well as the fabric for shining through. It'd be a bit brighter than the pumpkin patch, which you saw on my other piece, but look at that. It's perfect. That's so perfect. Mm, so good. Look, it's just, what else are you gonna use this for? I don't know. This, only this. <laughs> they were made for each other. And so that is being tucked away. Let me fold it up again. And it's gonna go with that pattern maybe for our Halloween start next year or the following year, because I don't want, I want to finish stuff too. And then they also did this one, it's called Goblin, which is, it's insane. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's so Halloween. <laughs> look at this, and you know what? I, um, this wasn't in a box, but I saw this and immediately thought the collectors needed to be stitched on this. Right? Could you imagine? It would be perfect. Look at that. Oh yeah, so good, so good. I love Bestitch Me if you guys haven't noticed. Even their loud fabric appeals to me and I tend to be more of a muted person. So good. And then the last piece of linen they sent me was called Ghoulish. I have no idea what to stitch on this though. <laughs> I have yet to find the piece, but this is going to hang out in my stash and I am sure I will find something to stitch on this. You could almost do like one thing here and another thing down here in the purple. You can make something work. So that was the last piece of linen. So beautiful, such high quality ghoulish and then on top of that they sent us hand dyed silks all halloween hand dyed silks halloween inspired hand dyed silk colors i should say they're just so fun 
so pretty. There was another pattern too that I forgot to snag that was in this kit. Um, so all sorts of goodies. Highly, highly recommend if you're a Halloween person and love Halloween stuff and love goodies and surprises in the mail. The Stitch Me Halloween box and Autumn Lane Stitchery Halloween box. They are good. And then last but not least, I need to give a nod to the Fairy to Dust Clay. I think her name is Anna. Anna, Anna. Fairy Dust Clay because these will be needle minders and they are to die for. Look, it's a hedgehog Mwah. dressed as a pumpkin. It's adorable. Look at the little witchy with her little bubbles. Her cauldron is literally bubbling. <laughs> and look at this one. She's got her little black fairy wings and her black cat. So I will get magnets and these will become some of my new friends. So yes, all Halloween, all full of fun. Have I missed an, oh, I have missed one thing, a big thing, the most beautiful thing I have ever seen ever. Let me, let me tell you. If you have not seen floss, um, fibers and floss, fiber and floss, Erica. The Huga Stitcher did a floss tube with her best, one of her best friends, her name is Erica. She is, let me actually look before I give you the wrong information because I don't want to give you the wrong information because yes, Vipers and Floss, um, because you should check out her products. They are beautiful. She has started a floss tube. So her first floss tube went up this month. It's amazing. She's an amazing stitcher. She's so accomplished. She is, um, someone you would, I would love to emulate like skilled beyond imagining. But she is making um, a number of things. And one of those things is what she calls a portfolio. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. I So it was a surprise. I told her my, my, my color palette preference. And she's like, okay, what kind of fabrics? And I, she just surprised me. I was like, just surprise me. It's going to be great. And look at this. It's amazing like i can't even look at this it's stiff it's got an opening that's velcro but it's like stiff and it will fit two projects look at this there's a folder back here and the vinyl here the same thing here and vinyl here oh and look, i mean look at this it's so beautiful it's so, so, so beautiful. So thank you, Erica, first and foremost, for such a beautiful, beautiful product. I am so excited. I'm trying to find the perfect project to put in it. What I'm thinking is she's making me another one because I'm greedy. <laughs> I'm thinking about putting my seasonal queens in here. So like autumn and winter in one and summer and spring in the other. Um, so that they can all live together in harmony. <laughs> we'll see. That's what I was thinking. I haven't decided yet. But check out, she's doing more, uh, making more next next month, yeah, because it's still technically October, with um, the cutest fabric line, and I can't think of the name. Is it Tilda? It might be Tilda. It might not be Tilda. Ignore, ignore that lack of knowledge there. Go check her out, she'll tell you. <laughs> but there are little hibernating animals all in sorts of beautiful fall colors and I just, mm, it's to die for. So check her out, check out her floss tube, check out her Instagram. Um, she sells all sorts of other things like caddies and beautiful project bags that are her unique kind of um, style being that she has a pocket in the back, which is great. So highly recommend that as well. Um, as you can see, there's just so much that I recommend today. Uh, but I think that is all. Thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for sticking with me. This is a bit of a longer one where I did a lot of rambling and a lot of buying stuff apparently. So it was good to spend time with you today and 
I hope if you celebrate Halloween that you have a lovely time this evening um, with trick-or-treaters and, I don't know, scary movies and candy because that's the best way. So I will be seeing you soon and hopefully with a lot of stitching next time. You have a good day. Bye.